come on it's cold <laughs> what's up everybody we're here uh at academy we're gonna go inside real quick and take a look at uh the fishing rod and reel combos that i was telling you about so it's nighttime as you can see i brought the kids you can see them back there carlitos and brisa they're freezing so we're gonna go ahead and get inside and see what we can find So you can see there's where we have like just the rods by themselves again just starting out you don't need to mess with it over here are the very nice reels for you to check out and then the really expensive ones are down there in the bottom coming around this way again more rods you'll see a refrigerator like this where they'll have either the shrimp worms uh, sometimes they have other things as well uh, and then the other one right here is going to be your worms. So we'll talk about worms later on. So this is what we're looking for, right? This is the rod and reel combos that you're going to see when you come in here. Um, price is going to vary between 20 and 30 bucks, all the way up to 100, you know, whatever. Um, for me, I like to go with brighter colors. Um, and then for the kids. So here we have the ones that you can use for the kids. Some of them are a lot smaller. Some of them are actually extendable. From here, this one's $24.99, $29.99. And then you have the kids' ones, right? This is the one that that I started using when I was a kid, right? These little bitty Snoopy rods. This was actually Paw Patrol. But what I'm gonna touch on later on, and I want you to notice, is the length of that rod from the tip of the reel down here to the tip of the rod. We'll go over that later, but I want you to notice the difference. There's the Moana one. These are pretty cheap, $15. You can't beat that. Uh, $20 for oh so this is what I was talking about the very thin rods you see how thin that is I would not suggest getting something like that you see this that's gonna be a little too thin the regular ones like this Shakespeare this is $20 this is perfect and it has a little starter kit in it uh, so actually I might do the Shakespeare uh, and then they also have the Zebco uh, spinning reel uh, again 20 bucks it's not expensive but that's gonna be a little more difficult for somebody first starting out um, I was gonna do the Zebco 404, which is $24.99. That's nothing. That's that's e oh, here's a two pack. Look at this one for you and one for the kid. No wonder. So that one's $29.99. That would be perfect if you're getting them for you and your kids. And then the taco boxes and stuff, and we'll go over that later on. So I'm thinking I'm really liking the Shakespeare. Shakespeare is a good brand, too. So this is gonna be almost perfect, I would say. So you got this is spin cast. So you got your button on top, your drag that we'll talk about, and then of course the handle. Um, and then it has the little starter kit. So most of them have starter kits in it. There's the Zebco, uh, and it's not going to have a lot of stuff, but it's going to be enough to get you on the water, right? Enough just to get you out there and, and getting that line wet and pulling in some fish, especially for you and the kids. So there you have it. We'll take the Shakespeare. Um, should do some fishing with it here later, and. Uh, show you that it doesn't take a lot of money it doesn't take a big investment for you to go out there and uh, get on the water and catch some fish these kids I mean even for these look at this this is $15 you know $10 look at the Moana $10 for a spider-man uh, Ron real combo and these things last forever my kids fish with these for like seven or eight years I kid you not uh, and then with Carlitos we moved them up to uh, one of these other ones over here and you can move up I mean these are like well this one's $40 for this uh, neon green one and these other ones, $64. Uh, those are nice too. Once they get a little bit bigger, uh, I would say go ahead, especially if they like it, then you can kind of move up into one of these. Uh, but for now, this, this Shakespeare right here is going to do us good. So we'll run with that. Okay, so that was basically the rods and reels that we were talking about, the combos. So we'll go home, um, I'll open it up, and then I'll walk you through what comes in the box, how to set up the rod and reel, um, and how to get you started. All right, so we'll see you back at the house. Um, we just went to Academy's last night, right? We bought the uh, rod and reel combination with the little starter kit in it. Um, just gonna go over it really quick, um, just to show you what comes with it, uh, what you can use, what you probably won't use, maybe a couple things uh, that you probably need to go ahead and get if you want to. Like I said, you have everything here that you need to go ahead and fish, right? Other than just the bait. Uh, you can use everything here, but like I said, fishing with the kids, that slip bobber that I mentioned in my previous video, I'll put a link up here. The slip bobber, I would recommend um, maybe some swivels. 
uh, but you don't need the slip bobber swivels. You really could just go out with this right here and just go ahead and knock them out. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and just open this up to kind of show you what, what it comes with. So of course you're gonna have your rod, right? And then the reel. Um, and then I like the two pieces. So of course this is a two piece, right? You gotta put it together. I like the two pieces because um, I used to have a Tahoe and I could just throw whatever in there, right? even the long uh, eight foot rods, I could just chunk them in there and not be a, not be a problem. But then um, I went ahead and sold that and I got an Accord, so a little, uh, you know, a sedan. So you can't put long rods in there. You gotta, you can, but you're gonna be, you know, either poking them out the back or you're gonna be hitting somebody in the, in the front of their head in the front seat. So I like the two pieces because, I mean, you just take them apart and then boom, you just throw it in the trunk and they'll fit. And all of our rods, for the most part, break down. And, and like I said, usually, especially with the kids, if you do get like the Snoopy ones, those aren't gonna break down, but they're not that long to begin with. So you shouldn't have any problems. Um, so anyway, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just go ahead and just put that in there like that and then you're good to go. So this one, uh, I was looking at the back of it. It does come with a six pound test right off the bat. So like I said, six to eight is gonna be no problem. You'll be able to catch whatever you want to. You're not gonna catch any monster bass or catfish, right? You probably could, which is what the drag is for, but we'll talk about that here later. Um, but basically to let your line out, you'd push that little button and then just pull it out right here. And then you'll just thread it through the rod guides. Um, and then like I said, my next video will go over setting it up and getting all that stuff um, ready for you to go out um, and start fishing. So just like I said, so for this one, uh, you do have your drag, which your drag is going to allow line to be pulled out by the fish without your line actually breaking. Now it can break, but that's what your drag is for. Um, so if you think about it, if you had, let's say, um, a piece of string, right, or a piece of cotton string, if you pull on that really hard, it'll, it'll rip, it'll break, right? Well, with a drag, you're kind of letting it almost like a rubber band. You're letting it stretch a little bit. So you hear that little clicking, it's letting line out. So what you want to do is you want to adjust that drag depending on what kind of fish you have. If it's a big fish, you want it loose, right? So that fish can actually run with it without breaking it. But you don't want it so loose that it's just pulling line. So, and usually I'll have it just tight um, and there's a plus and minus. So you'll just basically rotate that to the plus and you'll just pull it until right there it's it's pretty tight and it's kind of have to get a feel for it um and when you actually get a fish on you'll be able to tell if it's clicking like that or if you're trying to if your kids are reeling it in and they just hear that click like that that means the drag is too loose go ahead and rotate that knob to the plus um, but like i said it's not that big a deal if you're if you're worried about it just go ahead and move it all the way to the plus um and then just start fishing right and if for some reason you start popping lines that's when you want to go ahead and back it down to the minus. Um, so this is going to be the button to cast it, right? I was watching a video the other day and they're showing you how to fish. And he's like, okay, so what you want to do, you want to grab your pole, you want to cast your line out. And then that was it. And I'm like, people don't really know what, if I say cast it out, what does that mean? Do I push this? What do I do? Do I hold it? So when you cast it, you want to push this button. This button releases the spool so the line can come out. Line will not come out until you release it. So you think about it, like when you throw a baseball, when you throw a baseball, you don't just, you know, you grab that ball and then you throw it, right? When you throw, you open your hand, right? You don't just hold it and then just keep your hand closed because it's not going to go anywhere, right? And you don't want to open it, open your hand too early or that ball is going to go straight up, right? You don't want to open your hand too late or you're throwing that ball into the ground. So you kind of have to time it to where, let's say at the 45 degree angle, once my hand hits 45 degrees, I open my hand, right, to release the ball. Same thing with this. You want to push it down. And then once that pole gets to about 45 degrees, you let it go, just the thumb, not the handle, right? Because I've, I've worried about in the past, I tell my kids every single time when they were learning, make sure you don't let go, because I've seen videos where they'll cast it and the kid will just let go. And there goes the pole, right? So like I said, push it down. Once it gets to about 45, let the thumb go and then the line will go ahead and spool off and you, there goes your stuff. So that's how you do that. Um, once you do that, you'll hear a click, right? So once that, that uh, float hits that water, they want to go ahead and I tell the kids, go ahead and click it, right? So that means just turn this handle to hear a click. When you hear that click, that means the line won't come out, right? It's there. Um, once you push it, it releases it and they can just pull line like nothing, right? So I always tell them once that float hits that water, go ahead and click the line. And if you want to, go ahead and take up the slack, right? So there's not just a whole bunch of line laying out there. Um, but like I said, the next video, I'll go through rigging it up, how to set it you know, through your rod guides and all that good stuff. Um, so these two zip ties, um, they come on here uh, so that 
some people, I guess, can go ahead and undo this and steal the reels off the rod and reel combo. Um, so you don't need these. You can actually just cut these off. I've seen some people to where they actually leave them on there. And I guess you can, but it gets in the way whenever you got your hand on there, you got that zip tie. And you know how some of these zip ties have like the sharp edges on them? You don't need it, right? You just go ahead and cut it off and you're good to go. Uh, now, sometimes what'll happen is this is the top part. So if you, if you watch me unscrew this, this top portion from here is gonna start going up, right? So that's how you replace that reel. You'll go, you'll unscrew that to the top and then just wiggle this out and it comes out. So same way to put it back in, it's just like a little shoe, right? You put the toe in and then the very front and then you screw it down and that'll hold your reel uh, right against your rod. Now what does happen too, um, you'll be fishing and it'll start getting real loose on you. Just check this part, make sure it's tightened up because it will loosen. I don't know what causes it to loosen. I guess maybe just using it over and over or maybe just the movement itself loosens it up. But like I said, just give that a little, little tighten and you'll be good to go. Um, and this is, just, I guess, literature that shows you the name of it, brand. Oh, it's a fishing manual. I don't know what that's about, so we'll take a look at that. Uh, we don't need that. The videos that I'm that I'm making for you guys, it'll show you how to fish, right? So I think the ones coming up after this are going to be the exciting ones because we're actually going to go out there and then start actually doing something, right? Because you have to educate yourself first. You can't just go out there with a pole, a bunch of lures, and terminal tackle and be like, okay, let's catch, let's catch some fish. Okay, but how? How do you tie your knots? What weights do you use? What floats do you use? What kind of hooks am I supposed to use? What bait? You know, all that stuff. You got to know it before you go. So I appreciate you guys being patient with the videos. I do think you need to educate yourself before you actually go out there. And likewise, when we get this rigged up in the next video, you want to go and practice in your front yard. I kid you not. I spent many a days at my parents' house when I was younger in the front yard with my rod and reel with a, a training plug, which is a little piece of rubber. Uh, it looks like a little pyramid that you put on the end of your line and you it's for training so you go out there and you just you practice throwing it out there and really didn't so i'm out there fishing in the front yard yeah there's nothing there but i'm practicing right so it's a little weird whenever like a neighbor passes by your house and you're out there fishing in the front yard but it's you're you're practicing that's what you want to do you don't want to go out there to the water and then try to figure out okay um how do i throw this at least prepare yourself for the kids that way when you're helping them or if they have questions you can help them out so like i said i really like this i like the bright colors especially if i'm fishing like uh, low light or at night time it helps out a whole lot especially when you're trying to look at that rod tip and to see if it's moving and you have a bell or or light or anything it helps out a whole lot and then plus even in the daytime you can see it a lot better uh, just because of the contrast with whatever background you're fishing against um my son likes red it's just personal white looks really cool too uh, just personal preference there's no color that you have to have uh, but i like the oranges and greens for whatever reason so i, I like the stiffness of this rod i think it's going to do this really good uh, and like i said we will catch some fish so looking at the starter pack right so i'm going to see if i can hold this to where you can see it so right here we have a chartreuse grub we have a white grub we have a curly tail uh, grub and then we have our split shots the weights that i was telling you about we have 10 hooks these look like they're number eights and then we have two jig heads. Uh, we have a inline spinner. And then we have our two floats, right? The one inch red and white plastic floats. And then we have a, a spinning grub. So the plastics and these two right here, the jig head and the inline spinner, don't worry about that. The only thing we're gonna use from here is the split shot, the hook, and the float. Now, like I said, I probably would recommend getting like the, the bobbers that slit, the sliding bobbers. I would get those and the bobber stops and maybe a pack of swivels. Tops, maybe $5 worth of stuff that you would need on top of this. Like I said, you can use this, but I think to be um, really good at what you're doing and especially keeping yourself and the kids safe, I really like those slip floats. I, I think that's that's a, a benefit because it, and like I said, when we're rigging up and I'll show you how to throw it, you'll see what I'm talking about to where I would rather have one foot of line hanging at the end of my rod tip when I'm casting it then four foot and then you're flinging that all over the place like a fly fisherman you don't want to do that especially with the kids because they'll hook something or somebody um so like i said you can use all of this stuff and we can right so we'll go ahead and do that uh, when we go out fishing i'll hook it i mean i'll rig it up with just the weight the hook and then this float and the good thing about these because you don't need swivels with what we're using here you can peg these on both ends and then same thing with the weights right you just you squeeze it onto the line and that'll be fine uh, the other way that I was telling you with the slip bobbers and the bobber stops with swivels, that's another way to do it too, right? You can do it either way. It's just entirely up to what you want to do. 
but you can use everything in here. There, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, um, like I said, the plastics and the spinner um, and the jig heads. That's that's for something else. I guess my thing is, is you know, my my dad, and my brother, they love using artificial baits. They love going bass fishing with that stuff. Me, I like catfish. And I like bass too. But I guess the way I think about it is, do I want to try and fool uh, a fish into thinking this is real? Or do I want to put some bait out there that it is real? I don't have to do anything but just let it sit there and do its own job. Now, if I throw a minnow out there, I don't have to tell the fish, hey, look, it's a minnow. I'm, I'm, I'm shaking it so you can think that it's a minnow. I don't have to because it is a minnow. So that's kind of why I like bait better than like lures, artificial lures, uh, but to each of their own. Some people love them. I'm, I just really... Uh, recently got in involved with actually like soft plastics and worms and stuff and I'm getting a lot better at it but my go-to has always been bait with bait you don't have to convince the fish that they want to eat it because it is what it is it's food um, so like I said we can use all this stuff I don't want to make the video too too long but uh, I did want to kind of show you guys look when we go to Academy this is where we go this is what we look for uh, these are the combos that you want to look for uh, what you want to get for the kids or even that combination that had the adult and the kid version in that same package it was like $29.99 right um, that would have been perfect too you know that's 30 bucks and then like I said just the the basic starter kit that goes with it and you're, and you're ready to get out on that water um, so the next video like I said we'll rig it up I have a training plug so we're gonna go to my front yard I kid you not you think I'm playing with you we're gonna go to my in my front yard I'm gonna show you a couple things first I'm gonna show you how to cast it right because there's a right and wrong way to do it and like I said you don't wanna wait till you're out in the water trying to learn how to fish and you're flinging hooks everywhere and, and getting warm guts on everybody you don't want to do that right so we'll go out to my front yard i'll show you how to throw it how to practice with it uh some tips um and all that good stuff and like i said you don't need to put a whole bunch of money into this that was what 25 dollars for this and then really the only thing you need is worms academy has it too for like 2.99 for a container and that one container that would be enough for the four of us fishing all day and when we go fishing we don't fish for just like 30 we'll go out there and we'll see people like they'll get there after we do 30 45 minutes they're gone and i'm like man they, they were hardly ever here when we go fishing we're out there four or five six hours all day or whatever so and the, that little bitty bucket of worms is sufficient i mean like i said usually we're cutting them up you're not using an entire worm every single time you throw something out especially if you're you know fishing for the little fish or, or with kids that thing will last you forever um, so like I said, we'll get that video out. If you have any questions, like I always say, leave me a comment. Uh, make sure you subscribe, like, and click that bell notification icon. Didn't know about that, like I said, until my last video. I was like, ah, I'm thinking if you subscribe, boom, you get notifications. No, because what's the bell's for? Notifications. So uh, click all that good stuff right there below. I'll put this little bitty sticker so you can see what I'm talking about there in all of my videos. So I'm sure you probably get tired of them. Uh, and if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, um, I'll get that next video out here in the next couple days. Hopefully, it'll be nice and warm outside. If not, we'll bundle up and we'll go out there in this cold 40 degree Texas weather uh, and get some videos put out there. Uh, until I see you guys next time, thanks for stopping by.